That's so brilliant. This video is sponsored by Case Filters. As photographers, we tend to want crisp sharp photos all the time and therefore we tend to use the common sharpening tool of Lightroom. But I want to be honest here with you, I stopped doing that for some years now because yeah, I'm not really happy with the sharpness I get by that. There is a much better way. Why I stopped using the common sharpening tool of Lightroom and what I do instead is revealed in this video. my friends, very nice to see you. It is interesting. Almost every photographer is doing it. In my workshops when we are processing images, really everyone is pulling that sharpening slider from its base settings more or less to the right. And I also did that for quite a long time because the base idea was, as I'm photographing in raw format, uh, the image is flat, there's contrast and sharpness missing, so I added contrast and I added sharpness and even clarity just, you know, to bring it back. Because this is exactly what our camera would do if we would photograph in JPEG instead of RAW format. But the thing is, there is a good reason why I'm photographing in RAW format and not in JPEG. Even two reasons. First of all, RAW format offers me a better dynamic range. This means I get more drawings in the shadows and in the highlights at the same time. But what gets often overlooked is, uh, especially in fine art photography, RAW format offers me the amazing possibility to process my images exactly in the way how I want it as the artist, how it adds to the image uh, I want to process. So why in the world should I try then to do exactly the same as a camera would do? It doesn't make all the much sense, right? Just adding contrast, clarity and sharpness doesn't lead to a pleasing result for me. Meanwhile, I see this even as the best way how to kill the mood in an image. Just let me show you a quick example. In this image here, I photographed this nice brook here. The water was a little bit steaming and this led to this fantastic mood. We have high contrast here in the foreground, but the further it goes to the distance, the less contrast we have. Now, by increasing contrast, clarity and sharpness, we would simply kill this nice mood, right? The much better way is to support that mood even. So what I do is, uh, with an image like that is, I, I don't uh, touch the sharpening slider at all. I don't want overall contrast, I don't want to have overall clarity. What I do instead is, I try to find out where in the image I find the contrast. And in this image, it is the foreground. And the further it goes to the distance, the less contrasts we get. So all I do is I add a linear gradient mask and I add a little bit of contrast, clarity and sharpness. Again, I just want to support the effect that is already made by nature. And to achieve that, I also add a second linear gradient mask. This time for the distance. And I even take a little bit of contrast away. Maybe also a bit of clarity. Yeah, this looks much better. Don't enough, I want to show you some more examples with different compositional architectures because it doesn't always work like that. The problem in landscape photography is actually that there is not one single focus point and a blurry bokeh behind that or so as it is in portrait photography for instance. In landscape photography we usually want everything pinch up from front to back. I think this is also why we tend to tap in this trap actually of trying to get everything contrasty and sharp, but this ruins your photos. In this image here, I didn't have steaming water through, it was a clear summer day in the Alps. But also here we can see that the foreground is more contrasty than the distance. And this is given by the haze in there. You know, due to dust particles, the air gets softer to the distance. And this adds this fantastic sense of depth to this image. It really feels like we could walk into this image, right? If I would just add contrast, clarity and sharpness, yeah, I would kill the mood of this image. But don't let's kill it, let's support the mood even. I mean, the principle is the same also for this image. As I want to keep the softness to the distance, I use a radial filter in this case, because I just want to affect the distance back there. The clouds up there are closer and sharper, I don't want to affect them. In the radial filter, I just reduce the contrast and the clarity to the distance. 
For the foreground, I use a linear gradient to increase contrast, clarity and sharpness. I add a brush just to get you know, the Empire Mountain face in. And also, uh, yeah, I add here a little bit in the mid-ground. When we break it down, it is all about finding out where we have contrast in an image and where they fade away. And then we can decide in which area we want to support contrast, clarity and sharpness and where we want to decrease them even. And a good tip here is usually it is the atmosphere that brings the contrast down. So using a linear gradient or a radial filter works in most of the cases. In most of the cases, just woodland is a bit different here. In woodland photography, it is more likely that we have a figure ground situation, that we have any tree or any branch getting overlapped over any other element that is further in distance. And that makes things definitely a bit more difficult. In an image like this here, I usually don't add any contrast, clarity or sharpness at all. There is no area where more contrast or sharpness would add anything to this image. Everything is done already by this nice fog. In this one here, I added contrast, clarity and sharpness just to these foreground ferns and I didn't add anything to the elements above. Because again, everything there is done already by the fog. This image here was a bit more complicated. I added a little bit of contrast with the brush here at the rocks and the back at the tree here. That's more effort of course, but it makes really a big difference. Now friends, I want to be honest here with you. In an image like this here, it would be a nightmare to use a brush to paint around all these closer elements to increase their contrast. This doesn't really work. So I don't add any overall contrast, sharpness or clarity to this image. What I do instead is I add a tiny bit of contrast in the highlights by increasing the tone curve here. And then I add a tiny bit of softness to the mid-tones of the image just to support the mood. Unfortunately, that's not possible with Lightroom, at least not in the way how I want to have it. So what I do is I open the image with Photoshop. And all I do is I copy my image layer. And then I use a Gaussian blur filter on the copy layer. Important now is to use a radius that is around the megapixels of your camera and a tiny bit below that maybe. So my camera has 61 megapixels, I use a radius of around 55. Now we have a blurry version of our image, but when we change the blend mode from normal to soft light, we add contrast without killing the mood. That's crazy. We can change the amount of this effect easily just by changing the opacity. Yeah, and this looks much better now, right? At the moment, the entire image is affected by this effect, but I just want to get the mid-tones affected. So what I do is I select a color range. Here I choose mid-tones and here now I select the mid-tones I want to have considered for this image. The white part is where the effect will be considered. Yeah, I mean, it needs a bit of trial and error to find the right balance for every single image. When I'm finished with my selection, I press OK. And now we have selected the mid-tones of this image. We have just a selection, not more. What we want to do now is we want to have a mask out of it. But trust me here, it just sounds complicated. Actually, it is just one single click. We just click on the masking tool here. And that's it. Just the mid-tones are affected by this nice effect now, which is known as Alton effect, by the way. Important is just yeah, that we don't overdo it. The blending mode and the selection of uh, the mid-tones limit the effect already. But I would anyway not go yeah, too high with the obesity. You know, it is really just all about supporting the mood of the image. So contrast, sharpness and clarity are definitely important tools for supporting the mood of an image. And sometimes we simply want to get our image sharp, really sharp. There are different things we can do to get an image really sharp and I made already a comprehensive video about this topic. I will link it 
here for you. And friends, I hope you liked this video. If yes, please give me a thumb up. Don't forget to tune in next week. There will come a fantastic video as well. I thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.